Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. I posted a poll recently about which characters you'd most like to see buffed up, and these two were the clear winners. A big thanks to everyone who took time to respond. I think we all agree that Jigglybuff is just too perfect of a name not to turn into a DIY, so I'm going to start by sketching out a few different versions. I'm using the buff bear bread I made last year as reference. The credit for this idea, of course, goes to the Instagram creator, Conal Bread, and there's more about that in my first video. I'm mostly playing around with the body shape here, because Jigglypuff is completely round, which makes it a bit more challenging to fit all the muscles into place. Once I'm happy with the design, I'm going to make a model of the squishy using polymer clay. One thing that an art teacher told me once is that if you can draw a shape, then you can also sculpt it. So if you feel intimidated by creating a three-dimensional shape, then simply sketch it out a few times. If you have a 2D version in front of you, then it's surprisingly easy to create a 3D one. In this case, I'm making the head and body separately, but making sure that the overall shape is still as round as possible. Every detail needs to be attached very firmly, and I'm using a toothpick to smooth down all the edges. In my previous DIY, one of Pusheen's feet fell off during the molding process, so I don't want that to happen again. Now I'm making Pikachu as well, and thought it would be funny to change the pose a bit. This design has even more pieces sticking out, so I'm taking extra care to smooth down the edges. Then I'm going to bake both of these for 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius. I'm using my usual method for silicone putty, which I find works really well for picking up all the details without air bubbles. I'm pressing the polymer clay model sideways into a ball of putty, and then carefully compressing it onto all sides. While the putty is still soft, I'm placing it upright on a table and making sure it lies flat. Then I'm going to leave this alone until the putty has completely hardened, which takes about 20 minutes. This is a very complicated design, so I'm a bit nervous about the molding. But to my relief, everything looks great and I don't see any cracks or air bubbles. For the next step, I'm going to melt down some mochi squishies, which is a method outlined in this video here. I happen to have these pink ones and think they would make the perfect color for Jigglypuff. I'm repeating the warning here for the mochi method, so please do not try this at home unless you have all the safety precautions. I'm heating this in 30 second increments until all the squishies have turned liquid, and I'm also going to remove any paint so it doesn't mess up the color. As you can see, I'm wearing heat-proof silicone gloves, but the container is still almost too hot to touch. I barely have enough time to pour the liquid mochi inside before having to put it down. Many people asked about the fumes in the last video, and this is actually not that bad. There's a slight chemical smell, but it's far less offensive than Plastisol, which is a melt and pour squishy resin that I tried out in this video. I obviously had all the windows open when doing this, and made sure that everything was aired out afterwards. Melted mochi squishy hardens quite quickly, so I can start demolding this once the outside no longer feels warm. Two things I like about this method is that the final texture is always perfect, and the material doesn't stick to the mold. This one pops out perfectly, and the color looks just like Jigglypuff. Next, I'm going to add all the details using acrylic paint. I sometimes mix glue with the paint to make it more flexible, but I'm not going to bother with that this time because there are so many colors involved. Jigglypuff's eyes have a big white circle as the base, and two smaller circles with shine spots inside. The trickiest part here is getting the shape of the inner eye correct, because I have to leave out the areas for the reflection. Once I have this layer, I'm going to go back with a lighter blue, and then a darker blue for the shadows. You just need a tiniest amount of paint, but it makes a big difference in giving the eye more volume. And now we've got our Jigglybuff Squishy. Now let's move on to Pikachu, and this mold also turned out very well. I'm just happy that no pieces of the polymer clay broke off during molding. 
This time, I'm going to use Sofian Toffee Squishy Gel for the inside. The advantage of this is that it's transparent, so you can combine it nicely with colors and glitter. From experience, this type of very delicate glitter flakes work best in squishies. It's light enough to be suspended throughout the gel and it doesn't all fall to the bottom. I used to like using chunky glitter like this, but I always have problems demolding them because the large glitter pieces would sink down and clog up the mold. Because this is a large mold, I also need to mix up more squishy gel. I usually go with 16 grams, but this time I'm going to make a big batch of 40 grams. I'm also adding a bit of Sophie and Toffee's squishy coloring to give it a yellow tint and then finishing up with an iridescent orange glitter. It turned out that I did make a bit too much and I had enough left over for another buff pusheen. Demolding Pikachu was a bit trickier than I expected because this one really stuck to the mold. There are lots of tiny sharp corners here and I was getting really worried that something might rip off. Glittery squishies always have a tendency to stick to the mold, but this one was somehow worse than usual. It took absolutely ages and I was scraping the squishy out millimeter by millimeter with my fingers. It finally came out in one piece and actually looks really good. I don't think it was due to the glitter because Pusheen was made using the exact same batch of gel and this one came out without any problems. I think it was just the shape of the mold itself or maybe something with the silicone putty. For the final step, I need a nice facial expression and I'm getting some inspiration from this great Instagram account called The Daily Pikachu. I highly recommend using a toothpick instead of a brush when adding the details because it gives you a lot more control. It also saves you having to clean the brush for every color because I simply switch to a new toothpick and the tip always stays sharp. The ears have a different shape so I find it easier to use a paintbrush for this part. And now Pikachu is done! These two look hilarious and they're surprisingly satisfying. A lot of people have asked if they can buy these, but unfortunately it's just not a sellable product. The time it takes to make, plus the cost of materials and shipping, will make them a lot more expensive than what I can reasonably charge for a squishy. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Bye!